Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Crypto Capsule Commentary, where I answer some of the questions that I get from all of you around the world every week. It's uh, it's Monday night, it's past midnight. I'm still at the office, but often this is the time of day or night uh, that I get to make some of these videos, but it's all worth it, because uh, today we're going to have a special USA edition following the elections that took place last week. I'm going to answer questions from the US today, like I did for my newsletter this weekend. Hope you're ready, because here we go. Okay, the first question, I got about 20 or 30 of these questions over the weekend, uh, and they all go along the same line. So it's really, is a Joe Biden presidency a positive or a negative uh, for the crypto ecosystem? Uh, the short answer is, it does not really matter. When you look at the crypto ecosystem, there's been really a lot of support on both sides in the US, uh, and really, uh, probably what matters more is really some of the monetary impact, monetary policies, what the Fed is going to do, for example, that has a probably bigger impact impact on the price of Bitcoin and consequently on, on uh, crypto markets more broadly. One area it may have an impact is what appointments the new president will make in certain key areas. Uh, for example, uh, in the last, uh, under Donald Trump, uh, you know, many of the secretaries were not very positive about crypto. Steven Mnuchin uh, has numerous speeches where he talks about the risk of cryptocurrencies. Even Donald Trump, actually, uh, when Libra came out in June 2019, uh, famously tweeted against uh, crypto and, and Bitcoin. So I think it'll be uh, potentially there's, a, there's a, some impact it can have with some of the new appointments. I think uh, what's really important to understand is over the last couple of months, there'll be, there's, there has been really impressive developments in the crypto ecosystem. I'm very impressed what I've been seeing from the SEC, CFTC, OCC, and there's a lot of good momentum in the US and I, I, I expect this to continue uh, for the coming months. So again, definitely keeping an eye on the US. I'm very optimistic, very bullish actually on the US uh, crypto landscape for the coming months. A number, second question from Dennis from Chicago. Uh, is the recent uh, billion dollar seizure from the US government uh, for, of the Silk Road funds a big deal? Is it a big deal? Yes, it's to a certain extent it is. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Silk Road was one of the first, uh, you know, dark web, dark net uh, marketplaces where you could buy anything from drugs to weapons. And it was shut down uh, in 2013 and the founder was put in life in jail. And obviously a lot of part of those funds uh, were still, um, you know, were still out there and we, we didn't know where they were. And it was just announced last week that the uh, uh, authority seized a billion dollars that was now moved to a government uh, wallet. Um, this shows you a couple of things. One of them is obviously law enforcement is getting way better at tracing cryptocurrencies. They're becoming way more knowledgeable. And I expect to have many more of these announcements. Maybe not as big ones as this one, but many others to come over the coming months. I think what you'll happen right now, honestly, if you're a criminal and uh, you should not be using Bitcoin. I mean, if you're, you're a criminal and you're using Bitcoin, you will get caught for sure. I think what will happen like any other criminal activity, uh, the smart ones will find ways to get around. It's a dumb criminals that get caught easily on these things. Uh, also, I think it's, it's going to be interesting as these coins will get auctioned off. Uh, the government will sell these uh, this Bitcoin eventually, uh, like they did in the past. Um, and these coins may have a premium to them because for a lot of institutional investors and others, because these are being sold by the government, the source of funds is very, very clear. So it'll be very interesting when this auction happens, who buys them and if whether there is a premium to this coin. So very interesting uh, development. Thank you, Dennis, uh, for your question. Uh, third question from um, uh, Michael from San Francisco. My good friend Michael, who's moved to San Francisco. Uh, the question is, do you think that uh, the news that Iran's central bank wants to use Bitcoin is a problem? Uh, the, the short answer is no. Uh, frankly, the usage from countries like Iran and North Korea and others is negligible in the broader uh, global crypto uh, ecosystem. The reason the, the Iranians, uh, the, there were two things happened recently in Iran. One of them, the, the central bank, uh, sorry, the law was passed that allows a central bank uh, to pay for international trade using Bitcoin and, uh, and another law that actually forces the Bitcoin miners uh, to actually kind of sell their newly minted Bitcoin, mi mine Bitcoin to the central bank. Uh, so, I mean, it is what it is. I think they're doing this really uh, because of the sanctions. Um, I think probably what's more important in a lot of these countries is how come there is a, uh, there's a lot of interest uh, and, and usage of Bitcoin. And right now in Iran this year, the, the currency on the free market is down 50%. And obviously there's a lot of interest on Bitcoin, uh, but many other countries in the region as well. A good example is Turkey, where the currency is a complete free fall 
And uh, Turkey is by far the country in the Middle East where there's the most usage uh, of, of Bitcoin and, and the people are trading it the most. Uh, generally, in a lot of these countries, uh, you've seen before in Venezuela and Zimbabwe and others, whenever trust in government and uh, policymakers is low, demand for Bitcoin tends to be, hop, uh, tend to be high. And this is what you're seeing right now in countries like uh, Iran and, and uh, Turkey and others. So, anyway, so it is what it is, uh, but the imp impact is negligible when you look at the big picture. So thank you for your question, Michael. Last question, I try to make a personal question question uh, each week now is a question from Lisa from Miami, beautiful city. I love being every, alive every time I'm in uh, Miami. I've been following you, Henry, for many years, and I love your levels of energy and dedication. What is the advice you would have for someone who's just starting and wants to build his personal profile on social media networks? Uh, there's, I get this question a lot. Uh, you know, a couple, first thing is hard work. You guys see the success that I have right now. I have half a million followers. I'm ranked as a number one influencer on LinkedIn and finance, uh, but you don't see often the hard work that goes into it. Uh, like today, it's Monday night. It's past midnight. I'm at the office. Again, I could be relaxing. I could be home with family and friends. Uh, but the, you have to make sacrifices because you're never going to be able to do these videos on your working hours. Uh, so again, there's sacrifices to make and you need to be ready for to putting in the hours and making those sacrifices. If you're not, you should not even get into it because there's nothing worse than starting and then and stopping. The second thing I think you always, always, always uh, need to be perseverant. Again, people see my success right now. You, I've been working on this for the last five years. Uh, so nobody sees my first one or two years where I, I would work an entire weekend, put an article out and nobody would read it. You know, so I think it's you have to wait because eventually you will hit that hockey stick and that's why I think it pays off. And the way you hit the hockey stick is my third advice that I give to everybody is you need to think about your audience. Uh, I cannot emphasize this enough. Um, I have a video on this of how I prepare for my speeches on YouTube. You can watch it, but I use the same mentality for my speeches. If somebody is watching this video and is dedicating five minutes of their life to listen to me, I better give them value. And this is why I really prepare and I try to be as insightful as possible. And, and frankly, it's never been easier right now to make videos. I'm doing this on my regular iPhone with a, with a $5 microphone. Again, I have another video on YouTube where I explain how I make my videos. So very straightforward. It's never been easier to make content for social media. And most importantly, I would say it's never been more important. I really believe the importance of a personal brand is fundamentally important. As whether you're in professional services, you're just starting your career, it's become fundamentally important. I believe a lot of the world is going to move a bit like professional football. You have a couple of rock stars, people will be their own brands, and they'll just decide which team they want to play with. And the, the good players will have the choice to pick their teams. And I think uh, building your personal brand has a big say. It's becoming very, very important. And often a, a, a comment that I get from a lot of people, it's... Uh, you know, it's, oh, I, don't, I don't have a point of view. I don't have anything to say. I think you're wrong. You have a point of view. You at home who are listening, you have a point of view. And for a certain specific audience, it matters. Whether you're in the insurance industry, whether you're in the regulatory affairs, whether, I don't know, you're in f &B or any other industry, you have a point of view that matters for an audience. So don't underestimate yourself. You're more valuable than you think and you have more insights than you also think as well. So never forget this. Uh, again, I highly encourage everybody to get involved uh, on producing content uh, for social media. That's all for this week, folks. If you have any questions you want me to answer, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I will try to get to them. I know I'm getting a lot of questions. I promise you guys, I will eventually get to them. Uh, but again, if you, if you want to keep your question anonymous, uh, you can ask, send it to me by direct message on LinkedIn or, or Twitter. Thank you very much, everybody. And see you guys next week for another episode of Crypto Capsule Commentary. See you guys.